Hello everyone, Zaid from Zed Security here, and in today's video, we're gonna be hacking Windows 11 before it's even released. Now, first of all, I'm sorry I haven't posted any content for a while. I've just been busy with updating all of my courses and busy with a number of other really cool projects. But anyway, I'm here now, we're posting new content, so show us some love by smashing that like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, Windows 11 was leaked last week, and as of today, the 23rd of June, it still hasn't been released yet. And as mentioned in the title, we're gonna be hacking it in this video, but the goal of this video, not to show you, look, how great I am and how I can hack in Windows 11 before it's even published. The goal is to show you that a new operating system does not mean all of the skills or, and all of the techniques that you've been learning are irrelevant. I know a lot of you is, are still learning and you might see the new interface, see the new windows and think all of the time that you spent learning is wasted now. It's not. The main thing to keep in mind is when Microsoft and other companies create new software, it is very important to them to make sure that this software is backward compatible. So it's very important for Microsoft to make sure that programs that work on Windows 10 will still work as well on Windows 11 because otherwise people will not want to use this, this new operating system. Well, all of the backdoors and the keyloggers and the malware that we use to hack into Windows 10 are simply programs that just do specific tasks that are useful to us. So if backward compatibility is maintained in Windows 11, all of these programs should work as expected. Not only that, the other programs that won't work will be updated very, very quickly. We have Mimikatz already being tested and updated for Windows 11, even though Windows 11 hasn't been released. And also we'll have all of the amazing hackers around the world learning about all of the new features in Windows 11 and probably exploiting them to come up with new attacks and techniques. Now, I'm not gonna be explaining everything I do in details. This is all covered across a lot of videos in this YouTube channel and in my courses and all over the internet. So I'm not saying you have to go get my courses. You can simply research the stuff that are not covered in this YouTube channel throughout the internet because there's no way I can explain all of the attacks that I'm gonna do throughout this video. But anyway, let's get into it and let's start with something simple. So I have my Kali machine in here and we have the Windows 11 computer in here. And I must say, I really, really like the interface. You can spend some time playing with this and you can look up how to download it. I'm not gonna talk about that. The, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a browser and we're just gonna go to refshells.com. This is a really useful website that you can use to get reverse shells. So as you can see in here, you can select the OS that you want to target, and in our case, it's Windows, and then you can select whatever type of shell you want to use. Now, obviously for the PHP and the Python, they'll definitely work, but you'll need a, an interpreter or a compiler. We're gonna go with the PowerShell one because obviously Windows comes with PowerShell pre-installed. And if this works, that means you can basically get this working on any Windows version and you can also use it in the bad USB attacks and the HID attacks. And we've seen a lot of versions of them on the internet. And even in this channel, we covered how to do it using a USB and even using your own phone where I hacked my friend's computer. So this can be very useful if it still works. So using this website is very simple. All I have to do is put my IP in here, which is 10, 20, 14, 3. This is the IP for the Kali machine. We're gonna leave the listening port to 9001. And I'm simply gonna copy all of this. And in my Windows machine, I'm just gonna listen for incoming connections on that port. So we're gonna do NCVVLP. 9001, and this is listening for incoming connections. Now, I'm sorry I'm going through this very quickly. This is not a course. In my courses, I break things down and do them step by step, but I'm trying to put as much information as possible in this video. So if you don't understand this, you can either research it on the internet or check out my courses. And we're gonna go back here and we're simply gonna open up a command prompt and we're gonna paste this in here, the PowerShell command, like I said, you can weaponize this in many ways. You can put it in a file or in a USB stick, um, in a HID attack. We're gonna hit enter. 
And if we go back to the Kali computer, as you can see, we actually got a reverse connection. So now we can do DIR to list the current directories in the current working directory. We can move within the file system and we can execute any command we want on the target system. So that was very, very easy. Uh, we're gonna exit out of this. We're gonna clear the screen. And the next thing that I wanna try is an interpreter backdoor. These are more advanced. They allow us to do more. And again, as shown in this channel and in my courses, we can manage the file system. We can open up the mic. We can turn on the webcam and do so much more. Uh, so let's have a look. Let's create a quick one with MSF Venom. We're gonna set the payload to Windows, interpreter reverse, HTTP, we're gonna set the hello host to the IP of the Kali machine, which is 10.20.14.3. We're gonna set the L port to 80.80. We're gonna set the file name to an executable. And let's call this HTTP underscore 8080.exe. So very simple command. We talked about this in the courses. Again, you can research it if you don't understand it. MSF Venom is a tool that can be used to generate backdoors. We're given it the type of payload. It's a payload for Windows of type interpreter. It's a reverse payload. So it's gonna send a reverse connection to our computer and it's gonna facilitate that connection over HTTP. We're given it the local IP, the IP of Kali, the local port that we wish to receive the connection on, the file type and the file name. I'm gonna hit enter and perfect, that file is generated. I'm gonna transfer this file to the Windows machine. I'll cut that off the video. And the next step that we need to do is listen for incoming connections. So we created the backdoor. Now we need to listen for incoming connections. So when the backdoor is executed on the Windows machine, it comes back to my computer. To do that, we're gonna use Metasploit. So we're gonna do MSF console and we're gonna use the exploit multi handler we're gonna set the payload to the same payload that we picked we're gonna set the port to the same port and we're gonna set the l host to the same l host we're gonna do show options to make sure everything is perfect and if it is we'll do exploit to listen for incoming connections so now let's go to the Windows computer and let's go to where I have the backdoor in here. I have it in my downloads and I love the colorful file system in here. But anyway, this is the backdoor. We're gonna double click it. If we go back here, perfect. As you can see, we got a connection from our target and we can do this info to get information about the system. We can do there to list the files. PWD to get our location and we can even do webcam stream to open up the camera on that target system. And perfect, as you can see here I am. And so basically we're spying on the camera of the Windows computer. So it goes without saying, now we have full control over that computer. And um, let's quit this and exit. And the last thing I wanna show you in here, again, it's pretty much the same. So I'm actually just gonna listen for incoming connections again. And we have a Trojan. So right here, this is a file, as you can see, it looks like an image. It has an icon of the image. And if we double click it, we will actually see an image of the same car, but the only thing is, if we go back to the Kali machine, you can see that this was a backdoor, and now we managed to hack that computer with an image. Again, this image was created exactly the same way that I do for Windows 10, and exactly as I show in my courses. Again, you don't have to get my courses, you can look on the internet how to do this. The main idea here is the same method that works on Windows 10 is working on Windows 11, and now we managed to hack into to that Windows 11 computer using an image. Same thing, we can do this info and we can list files, see our working directory and even turn on the webcam. I'm not gonna do that because we already seen it literally seconds ago. So all of that is perfect and it's amazing. And as you can see, everything is working. Let's try just one more thing and let's fire up better cap. So I'm gonna exit out of this. I'm gonna clear my screen and I'm gonna run better cap with iFace ETH0 and with a caplet, 
that is called spoof dot caplet. So basically this caplet, uh, let me show you the contents of it. It'll basically turn on the probe, turn on ARP spoofing on my target, and then just turn on the ARP spoofing uh, module. So what it'll do, it'll put us in the middle of the connection, allowing us to spy on everything the target does. So we're gonna hit enter. Again, all of this is covered in my course or on the internet. And as you can see, that works with no issues. And I'm also gonna load the HSTS hijack caplet to bypass HTTPS and partially bypass HSTS. This is a custom one that is included in the custom Kali. It's available for everybody to download on our website. Um, so this should work and it, basically what we should be able to do now, we should be able to see all of the URLs, all of the usernames, all of the passwords, everything that the target does and we should also be able to modify their traffic and inject JavaScript and do so much. So we're going to keep this simple. I'm just basically going to check if we can bypass HTTPS and if we can see usernames and passwords. If we can do that, then basically it means we can do everything. So. Um, to also make sure I have everything, I'm gonna fire up Wireshark. So I was obviously testing before this. So we're just gonna start a new session and we're gonna sniff on ETH0. It's already sniffing in here. And let's go to the target Windows 11 computer. And let's go to, for example, linkedin.com. As you can see, it's loading over HTTP only, not HTTPS. And let's try to log in with a username with test at google.com and put the password as one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, hit enter. And if we go back in here on our, on in Wireshark and let's scroll all the way up. Now I already have a filter for HTTP request method equals post. That's why I'm only seeing the HTTP post requests. And if we scroll down, we will see something interesting in here for the login submit. If we click on it, you can see that we have the username is test at google.com and the password is 123123. Keep in mind that LinkedIn uses HTTPS. So the fact that we're able to do all of this means we were able to downgrade HTTPS to HTTP and then sniff the password. Also, it also means because this, everything is being sent over normal HTTP, it means that we can also intercept all this data and we can modify it so we can inject JavaScript, get them hooked to beef, show them fake updates, serve them fake updates and fake files, replace downloads on the fly, do so much more. Literally everything that I show in my courses is still possible on Windows 11 because, not because I'm amazing, not because I'm doing something extraordinary, it's because this new software is backward compatible. Therefore, it needs to support the features that were supported by previous operating systems. And therefore, all of the attacks that worked on previous op operating systems will still work on this amazing brand new operating system. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. The takeout lesson is not to get scared when you see new software or new updates. Test whatever attacks and techniques you know. And even if they don't work, they might require slight modifications. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with the latest in cybersecurity.